Yo guys, the long awaited video is finally here. Um, I was going to do videos on my other guns that I did as a collection and, uh, singly, but I'll be doing them later down the line because I've been waiting to do this one probably longer than I actually um, anticipated because um, I've been collecting the parts of the different things that I wanted for it each month, kind of putting it together how I wanted it. So I finally got it here today to show you guys. The SRC SR5 MP5. This is the AEG version. I looked on YouTube and Google and I really can't find any reviews or anything like that um, on the AEG version. It's only on the gas version and I can't seem to find any gas versions in stock anyway. So, you know, it was kind of, you know, I didn't really know what else to do but to review it because I thought maybe you guys would want to see it because um, I wanted to before I bought it. So I thought it would be quite a good video. So um, I always wanted to do the video before I even planned on buying it. I always wanted my own MP5 proper one. Um, obviously in the UK you can only get 22, so we could only get the 22, 22 MP5, which hopefully one day I will be getting. Um, but until then, I've got probably the closest thing you could get until then, um, which I'll get into, um, which I'm really happy about. Um, the box don't really show much. It's very heavy, by the way. So I'm going to sit in the chair and show you. So I turn it. I've got just the basic uh, uh, SRC things when every shop counts. Um, every airsoft company has their own thing, uh, their own slogan. Slogan? Slogan? There we go. Gen 2 version. Um, I'm guessing the first gens weren't that as, as good. I've got different stuff on here. Look, I just want to show you guys YouTube on the bottom, which is always funny to see. So yeah, check out my YouTube channel, <laughs> um, obviously, there you go, there it is, um, yeah, I don't think it has anything special on there, mini battery type, ace line, um, it's called the ace line because of how it's set up, I think, um, how it's wired, so most MP5s are wired really through the back, uh, where, like, so that, that's why most of them have hard stocks, because it allows you to put a battery in there quite easily, um, a lot of people kind of um, take a lot of time and energy to either disassemble their MP5 and we rewire it or unwire it and re-thread it through from the back to the front um, to have it underneath the handguard and that's mainly so you can have a collapsible stock so you can have a bit more of a realistic MP5. Um, nowadays luckily we've got smaller batteries that can hold quite a lot of power and a lot of ampage and wattage, a lot of basically output, a lot of output a small size because you know 10 years ago, 15 years ago they were big batteries and they didn't have a lot of output anyway and they didn't last very long um, so batteries are smaller and actually a lot more powerful nowadays so now we can have MP5s that can be rewired through the front and not have as much of an issue um, so yeah this one is classed as the ace I think because it's front wired um, and not many MP5s are front wired, so this is one of the reasons why it's one of the top MP5s. It's also there's some other reasons why, which I'll get into when I've opened it. Um, there's quite a few different reasons to why this is one of the top ones. Um, I'm not trying to like brag, I just really wanted a top top MP5 because I was kind of sick of seeing the crappy ones. I did a bit of research, and I also heard that you can't HK slap an MP5. Um, airsoft really not, not many of them there's only a couple brands there's like two or three brands you can you can actually slap and apparently on those brands you still can't slap them at, uh, very much because they still break after a while you can slap this one as much as you want which I will get into in a minute so you open the box um, and it comes I'll have to turn it around it comes like this So what you get is you get the gun, I'm going to stand up and show you, it's probably easier, because it's such a big box, there you go, so you get your gun, a magazine and your parts kit in there, this won't stay open, um, I also got my, um, my uh, leaflet, not leaflet, my uh, receipt, this was very expensive. Um, I got this on the 2nd of January, so I've had this for a little while now. So uh, it's now April. 
or the beginning of April. So uh, yeah. So you get a nice instruction manual. Not going to go through it all, but it's a SRC one. I'm not not many people have seen these. People just show the product, but it shows every version of their MP5, and it also shows how to properly use it and how to lubricate it, and also different parts kits and different stuff, and also the uh, and a little diagram of it expanded. Um, I'm sure uh, some some of you guys will probably be able to look at this. And understand how to take the MP5 apart entirely. Um, however, I don't think I'd be able to. No, that's simply because um, maybe maybe it's to do with the sight post, but I couldn't figure out a way to get this front trunnion off entirely, the front sight trunnion, because um, I wanted to see if you could uh, take the bolt handle out and stuff. Because apparently you can buy replacement bolt handles too. Which HK sell for their real ones because you can actually wear out your uh, bolt handles. You can still wear out a bolt handle on an MP5 to where it can't lock open anymore, not to where it kind of snaps. Um, you can do it to this too, um, so you kind of have to weigh out what like because it's an AG, you don't have to cock it every time. So I'm kind of I do it now and again, but I kind of still follow the reload procedure. I still open the bolt, take it out. But I also I unlock and then release, which is what you're what you should kind of do. It's not in the training manual. It's in the training manual, it does say to slap the bolt on the on the MP5. But um, from from because it's such an old gun now, people have obviously had it for such a long time. Their own research is that you unlock the bolt and then re let it release, or you can let it go forward with a little bit first with your hand and then release, so it doesn't have to go so far. Um, your bolt handle will last a lot much more because it doesn't really precipitate with the um, firing of it anyway, the real one, so you can actually preserve your bolt handle by unlocking it. Um, the little hook starts to wear out and eventually it's not really a hook anymore, it's more flat so it just doesn't lock. So, um, you know, everyone wants a bolt handle that locks so you kind of have to weigh out what you want to do with that. Um, any parts kit? What did I have in here? I had a charger um, and my battery, and I think it's a 7.5 volt um, the WeTech battery. <coughs> because I got it from Just BB Guns, um, it's usually the recommended battery and charger, which is what I bought, just because um, I had a look at the specs, and, um, and the battery is what's recommended as well, because of the handguard, which I'll get into. Um, so... Uh, you get also you get space for two magazines, but this one comes with one. I don't know if there's any models that come with two. Um, it might just be for storage, so you can put your other ones in. This looks to be based on the 30 round mag. Um, I've actually repainted it a little bit, as you can see at the top, um, but it files it away pretty nicely, and that's just after a couple of magazine changes. And you can see the uh, change in height because of the paint missing. Um, underneath the gun, you get uh, a cleaning rod and a jamming rod, with both, because obviously it has, obviously it has two ends. Um, so yeah, the reason why the magazine wears is because obviously the the uh, the parts like the stock, the front guard, the magazine, I think probably the trigger, um, is is obviously. Um, SRC. I'm not sure if the lower plastic part of the, the hand handguard down here is plastic, um, or is plastic is is um, HK or is SRC, but the other parts are, um, which I'll get into. As you can see that's that's that there. It also says SR5 on the uh, top part. There. So I'm just going to say put that at the top here, but I don't know if I'll be able to. So, some polystyrene on this, it's had, had it in the box for a few days, just so I, it feels kind of new in my hands again. Um, I had to cut a little area for this front part, so obviously I have my own umbrella logo on the front, which I will just remove for the video because it is blue tacked on. And yes, blue tack doesn't stain, you can just use blue tack to rub the blue tack off and it comes off with it. And then you just rub any residues off like that. That's fine again now. So this handguard didn't come with the MP5. 
Um, the original handguard was the standard handguard, which I also have a, um, a selection of um, accessories which I was going to get into. So this is the Cree light handguard. So this is a much better quality handguard. Um, it has a very nice um, stippled effect. It's actually nicer than the stippling effect on here. This is actually a little bit smooth. This is what makes me kind of think it's an SRC one. But uh, maybe you guys can tell me. Uh, on the bottom it says SRC. For some reason it looks like there's paint missing on the bottom. I'm not sure why. That might be dirt. It says SRC as you can see. And that's how you get to the motor in there. You unscrew that. I think. Um, so yeah, you can see the uh, the quality is a lot nicer. I think that's just wear from it being placed on surfaces because it's a very heavy gun. Um, wear and tear on an MP5 kind of looks nice anyway, if you guys know. Uh, there you go. You can see the magwell there. So the reason why the um, like I was saying, I can tell these parts are cheaper, is because the MP5 itself is actually a real MP5. The What SRC have done is they've got Pakistani made MP5s um, and they've in, in, taken out all the internal parts and replaced it with airsoft. So the, the shell itself is an MP5. Um, I think the bolt handle has been modified too to be slightly different. Um, but I think the overall parts are the real MP5. It's a very heavy gun. It's got stamps on the top as well. So uh, no MP5s actually have this usually. I just uh, closed the stock because it actually the stock comes open in the box. There you go. And then I've got Cal 9mm there stamped into it. That's stamped. Um, it's very hard metal this is. It actually like that hurts my hand to do that. It's very dense steel. It's not um, aluminium. It's very heavy gun. It's very hard to hold it like this. Um, very heavy. The Like I say, the magazine is probably an SRC one. So the magazine whale is probably a real MP5. It actually has some sharp edges to it. So that actually does actually do some wear to the mag. The mag does fit very nicely. There's a tiny bit of wobble. That was, that's from factory. Um, magazine wobble is natural, and if you have a real MP5, when you lock the bolt back, the magazine should be wobbly. Um, when the MP5 loads, it kind of moves the magazine like that. It helps load the, the rounds, and I think it's the same with the airsoft. It helps load the rounds up through the, the speed loader thing. This is a mid-cap mag. It holds like 150 rounds. It's what it thought at the minute, but it's not wound. Um, I've had a few problems with this magazine where it's been fully wound to the point where it like clicks again when you hear this extra click. And then when I put it in the gun, it loses all its tension, goes and then ha has no tension whatsoever. I then have to rewind it. Sometimes it doesn't, like, if it's still in the gun, it won't keep its tension at all. Like, once it's done that, I have to take it out to let the, the spring reset. So there's something off with this mag, probably just a funky mag. I think if I get another magazine, it'll be all right, though. Um, but the overall design and quality is okay. I just, I don't know, I wish it was probably steel. I wish it was like a bit more like the MP5, just so it didn't wear so much. That's probably the only downside. Um, so yeah, once that's in as well, it's extra heavy, because the magazine's pretty heavy, um, especially loaded with BBs. Um, you, it doesn't really feel any different when you have the bot, bolt back and you put a magazine in. Uh, obviously, because it's an AEG, it probably doesn't really change anything. While it's locked back, you can. I didn't really understand how the hookup worked, but there's like a notch here. This little, like, looks like an eyebrow. You basically get like a stick, um, like, a, an, uh, like, a, like a knitting needle or something like that, dig it in and pull it back and forward. And I don't know if I can even do it now. It, it became a little bit loose. They've kind of made that hook there on purpose. It goes back and forwards. I've never, I haven't really needed to change it. Um, the accuracy in hop up is really good. The power is amazing. So that, that's how I unlock it, you see. Um, it just saves your, your bolt handle from wearing out. Um, obviously you can slap it. Sounds like a proper gun because it is kind of. That was the whole idea. I wanted to get an MP5 that felt like the proper one. So this is a Cree light. It's extremely bright. Um, I could do a video soon if you guys want some night shooting because it's a pressure pad on the front. Um, that allows me to just be able to push it on, engage and take it off again. This 
is a felt pad, um, which I'll get into in a minute. There's a reason why that's on there. That's a tactical purpose. Um, yeah, it doesn't get in the way of anything. It just looks a bit bizarre, um, but it has a functional purpose. So yeah, the, you see this front guard has like an angle to it, and uh, this light is in here. Um, so to get to the battery as well, you would pull this pin out, drop this off. You then change the handguard if you want to change it. This can be taken out and just have it just be used as a vertical handguard. This is a, literally a vertical grip. That's what it's designed to be for. Um, you can get a nice grip on that. You can do the reverse C clamp quite nicely as well with that. And it feels very good. I think this is probably the same quality as the proper light guards. And it's probably better than the original because it has a better light in it. The Cree uh, make their stuff really good quality. So this stock is um, is probably steel as well. Um, I don't think it's uh, legit HK. Um, there's some wobble to it, just like the real one. I just feel like the, the polymer on the, the back piece here and the rubber isn't to the best standard, I think that HK is probably a better, better grade. But with the front guard and the, the stock in this formation, we have the um, SAS configuration, which is what I kind of wanted. The, uh, the iconic MP5 look, I think. Um, the Also, this came with a muzzle hider. Well, not muzzle hider, but a flash hider. You probably saw that on the, on the front picture. Uh, I had to remove that. To, uh, to put this light guard on and this is, is actually attached by the the HK lugs that are left on here so you just undo the hook turn it and it comes straight off because it's like an AR15 type muzzle brake it kind it's like an inch off both sides so it stops here and then stops like here and it, it looks nice it looks nice if you didn't have this front guard um, it kind of modernizes the look of the MP5 doesn't change anything adds a bit of weight to it because it's quite a heavy piece so it's definitely uh, steel too um, but you can't get it on with this light on it what I like as well is so you can obviously get H and K silencers I'm guessing real ones and probably refit them to the airsoft but also it's threaded so it's got a nice uh, muzzle uh, thread protector on here if we unscrew that And you see, it's got very nice threads on there. Um, I did actually have an airsoft silencer that fit on this too. So I was running a silencer on this before, well, a better mock silencer on this before I had the light guard, the hang guard. And you can see the nice barrel, internal barrel, uh, the nice bushing on the front. I think this is, yeah, this is like reverse threaded. Just tighten it. There we go. Always remember to put your thread protector on, it just keeps the threads from getting chipped. Um, I know the paint isn't an issue, but I don't want the, the threads getting chipped, so that just sits nicely on there. And it becomes a part of the, the barrel, like it would usually be. So um, I like that, how you can use both silencers. Um, it's single and full auto. When I got this, the, um, the selector switch was very loose. I'm left-handed, so I use the other side. Um, and I noticed it was kind of, when you looked at it too, one side was actually sticking way out, like you could see through the gap. Um, and so I noticed when you have the safety in a certain position, there's like a screw. So you can actually unscrew these if you wanted to. Um, so I just, I just unscrewed it tight, uh, slightly held them together, tightened it again, and it was back to normal. So maybe it was just something in the factory, but it's fine now. Um, what else should I say about it? The trigger's quite nice, even though it's obviously a digital um, trigger, kind of. It has a very nice break, even on single shot. And also on full auto, you can kind of get three round bursts off if you want to, and single shots off as well with the full auto. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's obviously one position, or two position stop, closed or open. Um, but I've got some accessories I'll just quickly run down with you guys. So, um, yeah, I'll show you what I did have on it, what, what it originally came with. So I've got my SRC accessories kit, or parts kit, accessories and parts kit. So the first thing is bubble wrap. They're all wrapped in bubble wrap. So I just quickly grabbed them out of the bubble wrap. This was the original handguard. Not the best looking handguard out there. 
Um, yeah, it's not. It's just, there was no. There's no real uh, traction to it. It's very smooth. Um, I kind of did a bit of extra painting on it to give it a kind of like worn look, like it's been repainted in like a um, like a gun fixer's warehouse. Like so, like if like if it was being used in like a that's like a service gun. Um, it would like be retouched up by an armor or something like that. So like if it was damaged in combat, it would be redone by the armor. That's what I kind of look sloppiness to it. I kind of wanted that kind of sloppy look to it. Um, it does look very nice with this handguard on, but it's very slick. Um, I can just kind of put it in front. You can see how it was. This is like the original MP5 handguard. Um, it's just as wide, but the only difference is, is the front sticks down a bit more. Um, ergonomically, this has some like nicer grooves on it. Um, the way this kind of angles, it feels better on your hands, and you get a better traction. Um, it's kind of shaped to grip into the palm of your hand nicer, um, whereas this one just kind of slides around. But that's just, uh, I think, again, this is an SRC one. But what I like about this is that they've they've hollowed this out quite a bit. So it's even though it's a little bit flexible, there's more there's more room for a battery in there. You can get uh, two stick batteries in there, and uh, yeah, you can get quite a bit of use. You have to tuck the batteries down the side, either the left side or the right side. I usually do it down the left side um, because. It is a pain when you see there. You can see the muzzle brake here too. When you take it out, you've kind of got to deal with threading them in and, and tucking the wires in. And you've got the barrel underneath. Um, so there you go. You can see that that running underneath. So when you go to lift this up, all of this wire then starts to fold in on itself and gets in the way very hard to close. It took me about 20 minutes when I first got it to figure it out. You've got to kind of lay it down by its side. Um, where did I put the handguard? Over here. So you kind of have to lay it, lay it down flat and tuck the wires down the side and the barrel runs through the middle. Um, there's literally only just enough space for the stick batteries. This is what I was saying. So like 10, 15 years ago, people wouldn't have really wanted to do it because they would have been small batteries. Um, anyway, so because I like the uh, the compact look of the MP5 too, I thought these mags were cool, but I really wanted a small mag, so I got the 25 round mag. This looks much more like the old HK53 type look. Um, I really like the way it looks. It just looks cute with this mag, and um, it's a little bit lighter too. It's a much lighter without the big magazine on it. You can feel the difference. Um, Again, I like the stock, um, so I thought maybe yeah, I'll show you the muzzle brake. It's still brand new. Um, I like the stock, but I kind of thought you know I wanted to kind of modernise it. I, you know, you don't really need a laser for an MP5; a light's perfectly fine. Because I wanted to do airsoft in as well, so I wanted to like have this ready for a loadout. Um, I wanted to kind of modify the look and make it kind of. Uh, modern, not modify, but mod modern, modernify the look. So you take out the rear pin, as you can see there. It's easier to take out the stock a little bit. Wiggle it off. So you can also you can run it like this, or you can buy a base uh, a, a butt pad for this just to cover the sharp edges and stop things going inside. Um, there's also a little hack I can do with this stock, but you can run it like an MP5K. Obviously the MP5K has about an inch or two short barrel, but this is much lighter. There really isn't, it's heavy, but there isn't as much weight without that stock closed on it. Um, you could run two of these on full auto quite easily. Um, so yeah, um, with that in mind, you can kind of run it this size, have it as like an SMG type, you know, run and gun type gun, or more of a bigger gun with the stock. Um, I wanted to go a bit crazy with it, so I picked up a, a Cymer MP5 dual mag because I really wanted one of these for a long last time. Um, I found issues with this. This uh, magazine is just a little bit out of spec, so you kind of have to hold the magazine to get it to run. It's really, a, it's a bit of a disappointment. 
um, so it's still usable, luckily it still fires. Um, so this, this mag's really tight, it doesn't lock into the magazine release, you can just pull it out, but it's still quite tight. This is a Simon one too, um, this is just a single stat mag, you can't pour them in. Maybe that's why it's tighter, I'm not sure. Um, I also wanted to say this, I don't know if you guys remember this gun, the uh, the light on it is also a Cree. This is the same light, apparently, uh, built into this handguard, just a different frame. Just thought you guys would like to see that, that's another one of my target guns. Um, so, uh, yeah, so this magazine is a little bit out of spec. This is 350 though, 350 rounds, it also has some fake bullets in there, this is how you load it pull this back and it's like a shelf, these are glued to the shelf, well actually screwed to it, there's some little screws in the bottom, like just some model bullets, they don't have any primers or anything, they're just models, it's very cool, and you pull your BBs in there, close it back up again, and then this side obviously just is for show, um, I think it loads up with BBs too, this magazine wind is amazing, um, it really locks tight and keeps hold of the tension, very nice sounding click when you uh, do it. Very, uh, very smooth. Just borrow some of these BBs just for just demonstration in a sec. So, um, yeah, you can you can fully wind this and fire all of the rounds out of it. 350. You can see you have to hold it. You have to hold it forward, um, and it doesn't lock in. So if you do run too hard, this might come out. It hasn't come out yet. It holds it okay. Um, I would kind of hold this like like this or like a or like a grip just because it doesn't let it doesn't shoot without that. But you can kind of just hold it down and fire 350 rounds. This battery as well will fire um, up to 1200 rounds I think before it starts to slow down. So you can dump this entire mag out 350. Turn this into a minigun. And you'll see the fire rate in a minute. I'm only going to use the short mag. Um, I'm not going to go crazy. Um, just going to shoot a couple of rounds in the video. There will be more videos coming up, so don't you guys worry. Just like and subscribe for more. Um, but yeah, I think these are plastic. I'm not too sure. It kind of feels like metal. Maybe it's like a thinner metal. Um, yeah, these are actually um, one piece. This clamp isn't actually a real clamp. Um, you can actually move this front clamp though. So they, they are kind of real clamps, but they don't clamp piece together they're just on it very cool mag I just wish it worked better with this gun although I looked at the Sima gun I think I might get that just so I can use the other accessories of it it's a very cheap one you can get it for like 40 50 pounds even so I would recommend that gun if you can't afford something like this but I don't think you can slap the bolt on that one um, so yeah you can run that like that but I also bought a um, this is the same brand as well, this is an SRC M um, MP5 stock, this is based on the UMP45, um, this is like real polymer, it's a lot nicer quality than the handguard that came with it, so I know that they put more effort and work into the uh, uh, aftermarket accessories, but it's a side folder, um, so it has quite a nice, uh, obviously it will wear on here too, I thought I'd show you that, there's some completely worn on there, but that's from swapping the stocks out, and you can't see it once the stock's on there, so you line up the uh, the two lines on either side, slides on, this is a much tighter fit, some people like to sand it, I like the tight fit of this, um, you could run this without the pin if you really had to, because um, once it's on there you can't pull it off, even doing that it doesn't come off, um, it stays in line with the hole even, so um, what you do is you just make sure you put the pin through on the same way as the other pin uh, down here. Wiggle it in. So it's got like a piece of metal that um, guides it. Give it a wiggle. It does go in eventually. There you go. And there you go. You've got even more modernised. And so the Velcro, which I'd like to show because it's a proper this is like heavy duty velcro this is what i recommend i put it uh, on the inside here so that when they sandwich together it, it works um it would it guess it kind of ruins the look of the stock but you'll see why i did it there's also one here and there's also obviously one here so when you close it the velcro comes into action and it will stay the reason why is because this doesn't have a locking feature for some reason um so 
You have to be very careful when you're holding this not to have your thumb up. You can crush your thumb. I've done that once already. It fucking hurt. This is polymer. This isn't no cheap plastic. It actually really hurts. Um, there's no flex in any of the, the plastic. So, yeah, it closes. And then um, what I found, because it doesn't stay locked, it was coming back and hitting me. And in an airsoft game, that isn't good. Obviously, if you have a mask on, it's okay. It can hit you in the chest too. It's just not very good. Um, so the Velcro keeps it there. You can just then do that and it opens. Um, I found that, that you can kind of open this quicker. If you turn a gun, flick it open, and then you're ready. You kind of have to put the gun away from your shoulder all the way to open the other stock because it's it kind of is longer than you expect. So you're kind of having to go like that to, to get the locks to uh, engage. It's quite hard sometimes and under stress I can see people not doing that and actually closing the stock by accident. Um, with this stock closed it actually offers a bit more um, of a advantage too. So um, just for an example I'll put the normal stock back, uh, normal magazine back in. Right, so you can see it's like that. It's like it's also a little bit lighter like this because it doesn't have the metal rails. It's all polymer. Um, so what you can do is you have this front bit here. Um, sometimes the Velcro gives up. You might have to swap the, uh, the Velcro after a couple of times. It will wear out, which I've had to do once already. Um, you can wrap your hand around the front here, and you can still engage the light. And you have a you basically have a front gra uh, grasp. You don't put any pressure on the magazine, you just put all your pressure on the palm of your hand and try and get your fingers as high as you can on this side um, and try and just have it so your baby finger is the one touching the mag. Um, that's more of a, 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 better, re a better option for um, close range if you're airsofting in like a vehicle. Um, it's easier to move, maneuver and, um, and you, can, you, know, you can also engage the stock easier like that. Um, and I also found that you get a nicer cheek weld on here, like the UMP gives you. It feels a lot nicer. This is more like a sport line. And you can buy uh, this MP5 with this, this version of the stock, but it has a like a railed handguard, which looks more like an AR-15, which I don't really like. Um, but you can put different types of uh, front grips if you want one um, on there then. Um, but uh, yeah, I just, I wanted to get the parts separately. <laughs> I wanted the uh, the collapsible stock as well. I like to switch between them. They're very easy to switch between, as you saw. It's one pin, pop out, pop in again. You just got to pull extra hard to get this one off. But yeah, it's very nice. I like the way it, it feels and, and works with the stock. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, I don't tend to use it very often. This extra stock. This is more of a a bonus stock. I do like the uh, the old fashioned look with this light. Um, like I say, the SAS style. It does have a little um, rail here. I've put a little bit of blue tack underneath so it locks onto that when it's down because I don't like the rattling. Um, so what the little hack I've done was is you can unscrew this part of the stock and you can just keep the pad on. So I just had this as like a pad uh, and it works quite quite effectively. So you have three options to this um, with that original stock. You've got the original and then you've got this and then the buffer pad. I also put a little bit of blue tack in there, that's just to make it tighter, it has a little bit of wobble, it just makes it smoother. So that's how you take the stock off. This is just for put like for demonstration purposes. I like the added weight of the stock, you can feel the weight of this. This is what the stock was when it uh, that came with it. Um, it's much easier to put back on, um, it's a lot looser fitted. Um, and. Uh, yeah, I just I like the added weight. I suppose um, I probably would want to change it out in the airsoft match, though. But yeah, so uh, I'm just going to show you a little bit of shooting, and then that'll be it, really. Um, but yeah, it's a very, uh, very, very good gun, I would say. Um, obviously, for the price as well, I'd expect so. Um, but yeah, so. Uh, I've got a target down there. Let's move this table out of the way. It's just a coke can. Um, so this mag, I can just drop BBs in. I think this actually holds thirty um, BBs.
but uh, I'm only going to put like 15 in or something. You can see it's quite easy to put them in just by hand. I've got quite big fingers though. That will do. Um, the last four BBs, five BBs won't fire as you know, you have to hold it upside down. Uh, I like to do that just to make sure it's empty, uh, just because you don't really trust them otherwise. I'll do standard procedure. Also, it has like four different peep sites, or five. I prefer number three. They just changed the size. Um, three is kind of the right size for me. You don't want it too large and too, and too closed. You want it just in the middle. So because I'm left-handed, I can either bring it up or come across. I bring it up, come over, put the bag in. I have to give it an extra tap because it's a tight magazine. Um, gives it kind of a realistic feel. Now you can then slap for speed or you can tilt the gun, unlock and then release as you can see. There you go. Which is probably the, the best way to preserve your bolt. Um, of course we can slap it but I've already done that. So. Um, Single shot first, I'll just show you the trigger pull, so just keep an eye on my, trig on my trigger finger. You won't see the BB at all, but I'm going to illuminate my target. See, it's got a quite nice snap to it, full auto. Hold it upside down to empty it. So that is empty now. You can see this is the rate of fire. Very nice feeling. Um, you've got a very powerful um, piston inside of there, and you've got to make sure you lubricate it, make sure you spray. So, um, unload. So, you always spray your lubricant in there, uh, inside the hole of there, and just um, dry fire it a couple of times to get it to run through. Um, obviously, the bolt isn't real, you can't check any chamber, but it just adds the realism to unload like that. And obviously I make safe as well, as you can see that was put on safe straight after, um, unload makes safe. Typical really, what you should do. Safety is nice as well. But yeah, nice little stock that, um, as a, uh, you know, I like the standard look. If you guys like the standard look and you just want to have the light handguard, then do what I did. Um, but you probably will get carried away and buy the extra stock and stuff. The stock is nice, it just adds a bit of a, a bit more character to it if you want to change it up. Um, but yeah, just for the video, I thought I'd show you the MP5 in uh, the SAS kind of uh, amalgamation. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. It's been a long ass video. Sorry for taking so long. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Comment, rate, and subscribe. Um, stay tuned for more of the shooting videos on this, um, like uh, target shooting and stuff. I'll show off the uh, the actual power of this. Um, and I'd just like to show you like just the welding on this too. If I unlock. So, uh, proper weld spots. This gun is all like proper welded and put together. It's a very nice um, replica of the MP5. Very nice gun. It's also got a very matte, hard finish to it. Um, but yeah, I think the only um, SRC part is probably this modified bolt, but I don't see any metal wearing off it, it's just the finish. Um, I've actually like checked this multiple times, there's just the finish as you can see, there's no metal wear on that. Um, also has the uh, the hook for the three point sling that the SAS use, I actually would really like to get one of them. Um, also you can see the, uh, the rivets on the side of there, uh, which I think the, the, yeah, the Pakistan version has two like that. Can't, I can't remember for certain, I think I might be the other way around, I think the American one might have to, and they've added that on, um, but I'm sure if I check the photos, again, the Pakistan MP5 looked the same, it had the two trunnions there, um, and the weld spots too, so I think that this, this is, um, like what they were saying online, that this is a proper um, Israel well, Pakistan made. So yeah, definitely worth the money um, if you guys want a proper MP5. Um, but it's more of you if you guys want an AEG or a gas one. This will work in all weathers. Um, 
because of this, this like a sealed system wouldn't want to use it in like heavy heavy rain but um it would probably be all right and it would be all right in cold weather too so you wouldn't have to worry about the gas like getting too cold and freezing up when you're trying to shoot but yeah um definitely worth the money and i would definitely recommend picking up the accessories for it too thanks for watching guys comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video